Meatloaf, presented by Stella Frog. Number forty one. Now serving number forty one. Did you ever get the feeling like your number is further and further away from being called, even though you're technically only like four away from the number they just called? Oh, were were you talking to me? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yes. Yeah. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, oh. Hey, wait. wait I'm, I'm I'm not some creepy stalker guy or anything. You you just look talk toable. <laughs> talk toable, huh? Well, that's a new one. How so? Well, you, you know how in waiting rooms or pretty much any social space where complete strangers congregate with that one singular hope of reaching the promised land of the coveted front counter faster than they anticipated. Mm, right? mm-hmm. or, or It seems to me that people will go to great lengths to avoid even so much as eye contact, let alone conversation. Mm-hmm. Like they might you know, catch you glancing in their direction and then all of a sudden take a call or start texting like crazy or you know, they'll find something totally mystifying about a ceiling tile. I just... I had a feeling about you, though. I figured you might at least acknowledge me if I ventured to talk to you. <laughs> well, interesting theory about the eye contact. I've had my share of lookaways when I was just attempting to be nice. I yeah. know, I know, right? Mm-hmm. Apparently, waiting room niceness is so 1990s. <laughs> oh, so what do you think is the waiting room trend for the 2020s? Ah, um, blasé indifference. Um... How about too cool for school nonchalance? Uh Uh-huh. No, wait. I got it. I got it. We're throwing it back to the classic De Niro. You talking to me? Oh, that's very good. Oh, try. Try. So, what brings you out here on this fine Wednesday morning? Oh, well, I I just moved into town. Actually, I just moved into the state, so I have to get a new license. New to town, huh? <laughs> well, now, here would be a great opportunity for me to insert some sort of cheesy pickup line, right? Oh, yeah, such as? Such as? Well, if you need someone to show you around. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. for, hey, more suave. Did you know I was recently appointed the official tour guide for newcomers? <laughs> or, you know, I could go with something like, <clears throat> here's a neighborhood secret in case you want to know. The diner on Hayes makes the best meatloaf ever. Maybe we can try it together sometimes. Hmm? Diner, huh? And meatloaf? Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to question the suaveness of that particular pickup line. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there is nothing more romantic than a meatloaf and mashed potato dinner at a top-notch diner. Oh, I respectfully beg to differ. Oh, uh, hold, on, hold on. Let me let me sell you on it, okay? Okay. All right. For one, versus like a, you know, a fancy restaurant, at a diner, you can just be yourself, right? You can really let your hair down. I mean, I mean, we have a far better chance of getting to know each other in the relaxed jeans and sweatshirty setting that the diner affords you, as opposed to the, you know, the uptight, upscale, upcharging atmosphere you get at Chez Louise or wherever. Plus, a diner is congenial as are the waitresses. At, at Chez Louise, right, the waitresses look down their noses at you if you don't have the right cufflinks or, or you fail to pay with like an Amex Gold, right? Mm-hmm. There's no chance of that happening with Trudy, the friendly, reliable diner Well, waitress. no, let, let me just stop you for no, a no, minute. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. But- I mean, let, let me finish my sales pitch, okay? I mean, you're going you're gonna to appreciate it. Just give me a chance here. Oh, so, okay. so, so then there's the conversation aspect of a diner date, right? At Chez Louise, you got to think you have to sound like fancy and talk about all these sophisticated things such as the, the latest exhibit at the Whitney or the revival of that Chekhov play that's currently sold out or you know, whenever, where, whether Kierkegaard's brand of existentialism has 20th century applications, right? At, at, at a diner, however... You can talk about, like, your cat being sick and vomiting all over your bedspread or the latest episode of The Walking Dead or, you know, how the Super Bowl commercials last year totally sucked. And you can say that, too. You can say that they all sucked. You say the word sucked at Shea Louise, the waitstaff will start stoning you or something, right? Yeah, but, you know, I don't well, think then, that— Then, of course, there's... there is the star of the show, The Meal, okay. right? I mean, sure— if we go out on our first date at Chez Louise, we're probably going to get some Michelin star food. And that's great. 
and all. It's great, but I mean, Michelin star food costs as much as my car payment, all right? So I'm going to be sweating it out over dinner, anxious if I will, in fact, have enough to cover a car payment following our extravagant night out. And, and then, then I'm going to worry about what if even this doesn't impress you and I have just basically wanted to hawk to pay for it. What, whereas, on, on the other hand, let's say we go to a good old American diner and then let's say we do get the meatloaf meal. I know that we're both getting amazing food just like mom used to make and I'm not breaking the bank trying to impress you with an outrageously priced amuse bouche whatever, whatever the heck that is, right? Well, I mean, if uh, I may make one, um, one more point, one more point about the diner date versus the more traditional suit and tie date. Okay, go ahead. What's stopping you? Great. So, so <clears throat> it's just that a diner date lends itself to closeness, right? So let's say we, we go to Shade Louise, right? Odds are you're going to get all dolled up. Did you say dolled up? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you get dolled up, which means like stockings. No one and... wears stockings anymore. No, well, come on. <laughs> you get the point, right? You, you'll wear sh- your shoes that give you blisters and probably maybe spanks or something else equally Did uncomfortable. You just say sp- you know and what? Never you'll mind. Just, just please finish. hours on your hair and your makeup. And <clears throat> as for me, the, my tie will be making it hard for me to breathe, much less eat. And, and I'll be worrying if, if, if you can see the sweat stains on my button-up shirt. It's like, it's like the whole big thing, right? So by the end of the evening, the first thing either of us will want to do is go home and put on comfortable clothes. The last thing that we'll want to do is linger and, like, kiss or anything else. Mm-hmm. But if our first date is at a diner, we're already comfortable. We're already our natural selves. And so closeness becomes a logical next step. It does, Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. So what do you say? Hi. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I have to take this. Um. Hi. H- hey. Yeah. I can talk. I. I can't believe. Wow. On her head. Really. Oh my God. Well, what did you do? <laughs> you just all of a sudden had a phone call. Oh, so I'm gonna be a minute. It was. It was so nice to meet you. Oh wow. I'm so sorry you had to. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Well, that's. Well, that's good. Uh huh. Maybe I shouldn't live with a meatloaf. Uh-huh.